Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'll be reviewing The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Madsen. Morgan Madsen is one of my favorite contemporary authors. I think she just does a great job of balancing serious themes with humor and fun. Her books remind me of Sarah Dessen's books, especially this one. The Unexpected Everything is Morgan Madsen's fourth published book as Morgan Madsen. I know she's published a few books under her pen name Katie Finn, but as Morgan Madsen, she has published Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, Second Chance Summer, Since You've Been Gone, and now The Unexpected Everything. And The Unexpected Everything was one of my most anticipated releases of this year because, like I said before, I love Morgan Madsen. And although I did enjoy reading this book, I do think that this is probably my least favorite out of all of Morgan Madsen's books. And I'm having difficulty citing specific examples or specific reasons as to why this was my least favorite out of all of her books. Because I don't think there were any glaring errors. Maybe I just didn't connect with the story as much as I did with her other books. Or maybe my expectations were just too high after Since You've Been Gone, which is my absolute favorite Morgan Matson book and also just one of my favorite novels in general. Now, The Unexpected Everything is about a girl named Andy who is a serious planner and she likes to have things in order and she likes things to be predictable so she has her summer plans laid out she has a uh, summer internship lined up at Johns Hopkins and she's basically ready to go but her father who is a congressman is wrapped up in a political scandal and so he's under investigation and in a turn of events she is no longer able to go to Johns Hopkins for the summer and her father who has been absent for so long is now at home for the summer and now Andy is scrambling to have something to do over the summer so she takes up a job walking dogs which leads her to meet this boy named Clark. The story is romantic and entertaining but also serious when it needs to be which is very typical of Morgan Matson because Morgan Matson always likes to incorporate deeper messages about family and friends and the importance of finding yourself and being true to yourself which I really like. Andy has a group of girlfriends and including her there's a total of four girls and they have their own group message going on on their phones. It reminded me a lot of my own friends. Like I could see aspects of my own friends in Andy's friends and I could basically substitute someone I knew in real life for each of the characters and that made Andy's friends feel really real to me. I think my main issue with this book might have just been Andy herself as a character. I found her frequently frustrating and her decision making skills, especially near the climax of the novel, were very infuriating. I feel like the issues she was dealing with during the most tumultuous part of the novel were entirely products of her own poor decisions. And so I found the problems that she was facing very preventable. And so this was difficult for me to reconcile with Andy's character, who is supposed to be very smart and very logical and very forward-thinking, because I feel like if she were just more rational or if she were more proactive in her actions, she could have saved herself from a lot of hurt. Andy reminded me a lot of a Sarah Dessen protagonist, because Sarah Dessen's protagonists always have a very big flaw that creates a lot of conflict between them and other characters in the story. And that was Andy. That was exactly Andy. Andy just felt so much like a Sarah Dessen protagonist to me, and I always have an issue with Sarah Dessen's protagonist, which is probably why The Unexpected Everything is my least favorite out of Morgan Matson's books. I liked the male lead a lot. His name is Clark, and he was so different. He was so refreshing. He has an interesting occupation and his student status is also interesting, and he's just very, very different and unusual for YA. He's like nothing like the other YA male leads that we typically see in our books. He's also really, really geeky, like he's this massive dork and nerd, and he's into fandoms that I'm not really into, so he's not really my type of geek, but I still found him really, really endearing. I do think that this book was a little long. I think it could have been shaved down and condensed, but I honestly really didn't mind that much because I like long books. I like length to my novels. So it really wasn't a huge deal for me, but there were times where the plot kind of just seemed to wander. So now I'm going to talk about more plot specifics. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the unexpected everything, I would advise leaving in three, two, one. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so Andy has this really weird conception of romantic relationships, where she thinks it's only fun when it's not serious. And this reminded me a lot of Remy from This Lullaby, and also of Ruby from Lock and Key, both by Sarah Dessen. And she also has an issue of being hesitant to speak her mind 
you know, directly and honestly. And that reminded me a lot of Macy from The Truth About Forever, also by Sarah Dessen. When she purposefully ended things with Clark, I was just so angry. I just really couldn't understand because it didn't make logical sense in my brain. I didn't really understand her decision or her perspective and I couldn't really empathize with what made her act the way she did. And so that disconnect between me and Andy made Andy a little bit unlikable to me. This happened again when she convinces Brie, I think her name is Brie, right, to not tell anybody about her relationship with Wyatt. That's such a dumb decision, and I felt like Andy was being such a horrible friend by telling Brie to do that. Because, like, Brie is having a secret relationship, right? And she didn't tell any of her friends, so she's probably feeling really lonely, and she has no one as an outlet, so she has no one to talk to. And Andy, upon discovering the secret relationship, instead of urging Brie to open up about it or to be honest, and said she wants to sweep it under the rug and pretend that it never happened because she thinks they're gonna break up soon anyway. And I just felt like that she was being such a mean friend. Like I mentioned before, I kept on connecting Andy's friends with people I knew in real life, so I kept on thinking to myself, what would I do if this were actually happening among my friends and if I were in Andy's situation, what would I do? And I feel like in no world would I urge my friend to continue to be dishonest to the rest of my friends. And I feel like I would at least try to be supportive and not just tell her like, oh, your relationship is gonna end really soon anyway, so might as well pretend like it didn't happen because it's basically already over. Like, what? That's, what? What? Like, obviously by going through with Annie's advice, you're continuing to be dishonest with your friends, who I think you should be honest to, and also, you're just waiting for this to explode in your face. It also frustrated me a lot that Andy was surprised to find Brie kissing Wyatt because it was so obvious to us as readers because Morgan Matson just kept on dropping clue after clue after clue. And maybe I was asking too much of Andy, you know? Maybe I was asking too much by expecting that she would be able to recognize when something really important was happening with one of her best friends, but she was so oblivious to it and I just found it very frustrating. On a different note, I liked Andy's relationship with her father. I can't remember when it happened, but I know for sure that somewhere along their storyline, I cried during one of their scenes together. I think it was a little odd that the investigation was very, very rarely brought up. Like, I feel like if I were in Andy's position, I would be following the news and following updates and asking to see what the latest status was on my dad's career, because I feel like this kind of investigation being wrapped up in a political scandal, that's pretty important and it's going to affect my life as well. And it already affected Andy's life because the doctor person revoked his recommendation for her at Johns Hopkins. Like, it's clearly going to affect her. And so it felt a little weird to me that she wouldn't be um, interested in keeping up with the updates on this investigation and that it was so so rarely brought up in the actual narrative unless it was very applicable to the to the plot. But anyway, perhaps my absolute favorite scene in this entire book was when Clark came to pick up Andy for their very first date and Andy's dad is there, right? And he's asking Clark questions and Andy knows like nothing about Clark. She gets his last name wrong and when Clark says that he's not a student, that he's not in college, Andy's like, you're not? And then Andy's dad says something like, have you two even met before? And it just, oh, I was dying. It was so funny. I liked Andy's relationship with Clark too, and I like that we got to see so much of it because I feel like normally in Morgan Matson's books we don't get to see the couple get together until the very end, but in this book we got to see, you know, like the rise and the fall and the rise again. I thought it was refreshing that their first date went so disastrously. After the first date, Clark is like, we didn't talk about anything real. And with that one line, the reader instantly perceives what kind of person Clark is. And I thought that was just very good writing. Clark was such a nice guy. He was such a huge nerd, and I loved it. I mean, I don't think he holds a candle to Frank Porter, who is always going to be number one in my heart because he's just perfect. But, you know, Clark was pretty cool too. I thought the plot was pretty predictable. There are very few things that I couldn't guess from earlier on in the book. There was one really, really surprising thing though, and that was the way that Toby and Bree's friendship kind of 
fell apart. I mean, you knew that they were going to have a falling out once you found out that Brie and Wyatt were a thing. But I thought that they would reconcile, and I thought that they would become friends again by the end of the novel, but instead it took a turn, and Toby was like, no, I need to discover who I am without you. To have these girlfriend characters prefer independence over, like, a sisterhood that's been there for so many years, I thought was a very, very surprising decision. Like, looking back on it, I guess it felt pretty natural for her character, but as a reader, I was really surprised. As usual, Morgan Matson placed little Easter eggs from her other books inside this book, and she does it, like, vice versa, like how in Since You've Been Gone, there are lots of Easter eggs about Clark's novel series. Speaking of the novel series, really quickly, when Andy revealed that Clark had killed off the main character, I was like, oh my god, why did Morgan Madsen write spoilers for this book in her book? And then I was like, oh wait, it's fictional, Sophia, you need to calm down. But anyway, back to the Easter eggs. During the scavenger hunt, they went into Captain Pizza, I think? And Don was there working, and Emily was there too, and that was great to see them, especially because at the end of Since You've Been Gone, you don't even know how the status is between Emily and Dawn because they never make up explicitly in the book. So to see that they have moved on and that they've pushed through that obstacle and healed their friendship in this book, that was nice. That was really satisfying, I guess, as a reader and as a big fan of Since You've Been Gone. Uh, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say about The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. I'd love to hear your thoughts and also your opinions on anything I forgot to mention, and I'd also like to know where The Unexpected Everything ranks among the Morgan Matson books that you've read. I think my personal ranking goes Since You've Been Gone, Second Chance Summer, Amy and Rogers Epic Detour, and then The Unexpected Everything. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and happy reading. Goodbye!